it is time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Uh, I apologize for getting this video out to you late. I had some difficulties come up with uploading the video. I had to scrap it all, try it again, and blah, blah, blah. So I apologize, but here you go. Here's your video. Uh, I will do better in the future. <laughs> Most of the time I shoot the same day as I put the videos up. I don't work on them throughout the week. Maybe I should try that. So today we're going to be looking at one of my childhood toys, the 1984 Blowtorch. He was released as part of the, uh, the third series. He was on the shelves from 85 when he was discontinued in 86. So it's kind of weird seeing him with his um, swivel head um, on the same pegs as the ball jointed necks. Um, I purchased this blowtorch with my own money. Actually, he was the one of the first G.I. Joes, actually the first G.I. Joe that I had purchased on my own. Um, I was out shopping with my friend John Hancock, my old G.I. Joe buddy. Uh, his mom, I had spent the night at his house. Um, I did some yard work and she paid me 10 bucks. So the next morning we went out to uh, Fiesta Mall, which was, is, was, well still is, in Mesa, Arizona. Um, but it is now closed. It is a dead mall. Sears, from the last time I checked, is still open. But that is it. Um, I think they're just running their service center. <laughs> Uh, selling hardware, but um, it's hardly, that mall is gone. And it's a shame because that was the mall to go to when we were kids. So um, we had gone to the mall that day. We were looking around in the toy store called Toys by Roy. And uh, they were putting out some Joes. And I saw, um, who was it? Um, the Crimson Guard and Barbecue. So I snatched those two up. They were two twenty-five each. So I uh, purchased those, still had money left over. And on the way home, his mom needed to stop at the grocery store. So we went to the, my favorite store called Smitty's. I had spoken about that before in the past. Uh, no longer open. Uh, it's known as Fred Meyer in other states. Uh, so we went there, and the store is just huge. Uh, it has a full, had a full-scale bank, full-scale restaurant, a barber shop, a uh, snack bar, um, a sporting goods department that sold firearms, uh, sold clothing. As I'm telling you this, I could relive this store. As I'm seeing, you know, tell, relaying the story, I could see the map of the store. So we were shopping in. Uh, his mom was out shopping. We went right to the toy department. So in that store at that time, if you couldn't find your kids, you looked to the toy department, and there we were. So uh, he was buying some Joes there. Uh, I can't remember what all he bought that day. I think there was another. Um, he bought a Storm Shadow, I think it was, because this was in 84, 85, around that time. And um, uh, he, so I saw Blowtorch and Lady J, and I was really torn. Do I want the new, the newest figure out on the market right now? So it was 85. He had Lady J, and I thought, well, I don't want to buy a figure that he already has. I already bought you know, two that he has. Uh, he didn't have Blowtorch in Arizona. So I was looking at him, and my only, the deciding factor on Blowtorch was the fact that he came with so many accessories. And that was it. And not to mention the bright colors really attracted me. And uh, a lot of folks out there complain about the bright colors, and I admit some of them in the 90s got wild. And it's a common thought that uh, sci-fi version one started the bright color trend. Well, actually, uh, that honor goes to Blowtorch, uh, to the best of my knowledge. So, uh, there's my childhood memory with 
that figure. Um, this figure comes with, I don't have all the variants to them, but um, there are several variants that were made. Um, the On one variant, his eyes and eyebrows are black. Um, there's a variant with the short and long neck. Um, I The two examples I have are the long neck. The short neck is very obvious because it's his chin is right there up on his collar. Uh, there is a flamethrower that is rigid. Another one's made of a softer plastic. And there is one, not the accessory battle pack version. Uh, there is a version that came with him that was a darker green, but there was a flaw in the chemical process or the dyes that they used in the plastic. And over time, as the plastic breaks down, a red dye comes out of it. So according to yojo.com, you just wipe that off and it's good to go. So that is a variant I've been hunting for since I researched this review. And the rarest variant on this guy is his helmet. There is one that comes with holes in it. Um, but later on down the road, he was released um, with a uh, uh, to J.C. Penny. So um, that's the reason why I bought this action figures because it came with a red back file card. So let me pull up pictures of all these variants. So I added a picture of the carded example as well as the one that was bagged with the Toys R Us or the Toys R Us exclusive, I'm sorry, the JCPenney exclusive. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at these action figures. Right, so here they are. Blowtorch at his finest. Try to maneuver around here. I'm in a very tight space to record. So, as you can see, there is a slight color difference with these figures. That is not a variant. If you look, this is mine from when I was a kid. He is faded by the sun. Um, I had a wading pool about three feet deep, eight feet around, that I played in. Well... I left Blowtorch out in the sun, floating in the swimming pool face up. So it sun damaged his skin. You can see, look, he has a nice tan, uh, bleached out his hair. It's no longer a, that dark brown and bleached the pink out of him. But uh, that is okay. Uh, I was a kid and we do those sort of things. So, let's go ahead and put his accessories back on him. Uh, take a look at the accessories on this guy. This is the one I just recently bought. Uh, bought him in an auction for a song. The seller's son is in college, so they're selling all of his childhood Joes to help pay for tuition. So his first accessory, turn the brighter light on here. There we go. First accessory is this really cool air mask made out of a soft plastic. It has this little hose that goes down and attaches to this box in the front of his chest. I hope that is a CO2 scrubber, which is cleans out all the carbon monoxide that we or carbon dioxide that we breathe out so it attaches right there to his chin or his chest and it straps to his face his uniform as you can see is yellow and pink this is heat deflecting armor that he has down his chest and thighs all over his body and some of it wraps around to the back you see nice sculpting on this. I just love the color scheme on him. It's really attractive to me. I love the bright pink. 
He has this um, green pistol that's slung weirdly on his right hip. Uh, he could grab it this way, fire it upside down, or he could reach across mm -hmm. and fire mm -hmm. it that way. Very weird. Um, I apologize for that chime that came through. Uh, so that's kind of weird. They put it on there, I'm sure, for a little bit of swagger. His second accessory is what was described on JoJo.com as a man pack. Don't know why. It is his flamethrower tank. Inside is napalm, which is a combustible jelly that sticks to everything. Uh, it's made up of detergents and kerosene. So he has both of these tanks, some pressure regulators on there. Uh, this hose, or this pipe, attaches to this box right here. Um, actually fit, it goes upside down on the figure. I thought that looked really weird as a kid, but as an adult it makes sense. So you can just attach his gun, attach the flamethrower to this little port right here in the back. And he holds the flamethrower, but it's a little too thick to put in his hands, so I don't want to break a thumb. I used to have him with the tank up. It didn't make much sense. It made it hard for me to put the hose in. A lot of people cut this off, so if you're unfamiliar with this, and you find this on the aftermarket with the hose cut off, it's not proper. Why they had an additional port here in the back is beyond me, unless you want him to lay down with the tank uh, and the hose attached to it, but I've never been able to figure that out. So he comes with this helmet, kind of reminds me of Doc's helmet with the pill bottles on Doc's helmet, but this... These are, I would think, to be um, special lights or even body cams on there. So with um, the helmet variant, sorry, I got it off screen. The helmet variant has the holes right here. That one is very difficult to find. I went through several pages and could not find the helmet variant. So let's go ahead and look at his file cards. This is a file card that was clipped off the action figure's packaging. And this is the Sears or JCPenney exclusive Redback file card. Very excited to own that. I do have a variant for his flamethrower. The carded one comes with a very soft plastic flamethrower. JCPenney... Can you hear that? It's a very rigid plastic, so there's the variant on that. So let's go ahead and read his file card. They are identical. J.C. Penny and the uh, uh, <coughs> packaged one are identical in text. So it reads, Flamethrower, codename Blowtorch, file name Hanoran um, Timothy P, serial number RA5273412209, primary military specialty infantry special weapons, secondary military specialty small arms armorer, birthplace Tampa, Florida, grade E4. Now he had his time in the sun on the episode of... Um, is the Red Rocket, I think it's called um, Rocket's Red Glare or something to that effect. He was in there pursuing Destro, and uh, he spoke with an Irish accent, and that was brought up to me one time. It's like, why? It's like, well, the dude's Irish. Uh, Blowtorch is thoroughly familiar with all military incendiary devices and flame protection equipment. To blowtorch, the use of fire in warfare as a science at 
predates the bow and arrow, and that is very true. He's a qualified expert in the M7 flamethrower, which he count, comes with, M16, M1911A1 auto pistol. Bottom is a quote, blowtorch can't sleep unless he's near a smoke detector. Cigarette smoke drives him bananas. It did me too. My dad smoked for many years. Could not stand it. Uh, further reads, he always sits near the exit in movie theaters and refuses to live anywhere where he can't safely jump out of the windows. This is not irrational to him. These are actions based on intimate knowledge. So he sets things on fire and he knows how dangerous fire is. Go ahead and move in with barbecue. And I apologize, these studio lights that I have now are hot. Uh, so there you have it. There's a blowtorch. Very cool figure. And no, I didn't intentionally wear the shirt because I was reviewing the action figure. Just so it happened to be the first one sticking out of the drawer. So he's a great figure. I have very dear memories of owning this action figure. Um, I even used him as a firefighter with barbecue because they both have heat resistant equipment. So um, I do recommend you get one. There's a lot of them out there in the aftermarket and they're fairly cheap. Uh, not a real popular figure. So that brings me to my favorite segment, Byron's Scratch. <laughs> I quote prices off of eBay alone. There are other sites out there, but I do it for the mere convenience. I'm not picking on eBay nor the sellers. I'm giving you an idea of what the prices are, what to expect, and also make fun of the outrageous prices that some of these people think that they could get. And some of them do get those prices, the supply and demand. So I demand that you supply us the cheaper prices. So if you're looking for one that's mint on card, I found two of them, one for $200, the other one for $599.99, nearly 600 bucks. Um, I'm not a mint on card collector. I do have some that are mint on card, but that's because I got them at a very good price. Um, I kind of like the idea of owning some. I don't want to make my old collection mint on card for granted. Well, not at these prices. I like to pay my mortgage. Uh, so, 600 bucks for that. No, you get the miser of the day. But the $200, I'm going to call that deal of the day for a mint card or a mint uh, action figure. Uh, you want one that's loose and complete. The ranges go from $13.30 up to $18. Not bad deal the day on all of that. Um, incomplete. I think he's uh, missing his flamethrower for or $9.99. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, complete with the dark torch variant, $47.97. The owner knows what he has there. Um, and the Another, oh, that's a complete dark with, that comes with the dark torch, at least the fluid. Um, and uh, and complete with the dark torch, 15 bucks. Um, complete with file card, $14.99 to $24.99. Not bad. That is uh, deal of the day as well. Um, and complete with the file card, 10 bucks. Um, the full card back just by itself, 24, miser of the day there, that's kind of expensive. File card by itself, four, $4, it seems to be the average running on that file card. So that is a great deal. Figure just by himself with no accessories, $8.99. His backpack, $1.99, up to $2.99. You're paying more for shipping for that. But that's just how it goes. People are shipping them for $350, which is spot on with the price. Uh, let's see, his helmet, um, just the standard, his standard helmet, $1.99 across the board. You could get the accessory um, 
field pack or battle pack, whatever those things are called. I can never get it right. Um, you can get a um, dark green or a kind of an olive green helmet. Those are going for a buck a piece. His um, accessory battle pack backpack goes for around a dollar each as well. And his dark green blowtorch that comes with the, the accessory packs. Um, that is around $1.99. So there you have it, guys. There's Blowtorch at his finest. The prices are fantastic. It always makes my day when I see um, Joe's going for a cheap price. Um, it makes these high prices are making it hard for the nine to five or to get out there and start collecting again and sharing that joy with, of collecting with his children, his or her, her children. There are more women collectors that are coming out. I love that. Now, if you're six feet tall, with red hair and green eyes, and you're a toy collector, call me. That's right. Shoot me an email. It'll be down in the description. Uh, so, there you have it, guys. I Once again, I am very sorry for getting this out to you late. Um, I want to thank my newest subscribers as well. I've subscribed back to you guys. I've uh, watched some of your videos, and uh, there's a lot of talent out there. Uh guys it's great i love seeing more reviewers come out and customizers it really makes things a lot of fun so uh, special thanks to my channel supporters uh, that help make this channel what it is um, through your donations um, some of you donated to my um, dad's funeral fund and i added you in with the channel supporters so any help that came to this channel you're a supporter, or even for collaborations, um, I add you on there. So thanks, guys. I really appreciate you. Um, the channel supporters, when I do giveaways, have their own separate giveaway from all the subscribers. So everybody's included in the giveaway. And as you can see, I do follow through with those. So there you have it, guys. Um, my review. Hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Share this video. Don't forget to um, subscribe and hit that bell down in the corner so you get the notifications. Uh, this is Joe Mosha Videos 82 signing off. You guys have a fabulous day. Take care of yourselves. Always be kind to everyone. You never know what kind of day somebody is having. The kindest gesture can really make a difference in their lives. And also be kind to animals. They know nothing but love. Unconditional love and compassion, even wild animals, guys. So there you have it. Take care. See you next week for another G.I. Joe toy review. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. It's over.